Welcome to the Campbell River Art Gallery. I am Janelle Pasechnik, and we're here in the exhibition Finding Sybil, Contemporary Responses to Sybil Andrews with Marcy Pryor, a former student of Sybil Andrews. And here today we're talking about the big lessons that students were able to learn from Andrews and then also being able to see that legacy coming out in the commissioned works in our exhibition here today. So Marcy, what do you think some of the biggest takeaways um, you have from your years working with Andrews are? Oh, um, composition, probably the most important that I learned from her. Um, and just being able to see, that was a very important thing for her, is you don't just look at something, you have to see it. And, you know, that seems pretty basic, but really, you know, if you were in her class, you could do a drawing, but if you didn't see every little shadow, I mean, you look at this wall, you see a shadow, but there's a shadow and a shadow and a shadow. And so that you really started to see the whole picture. And if you could see movement, especially, if you're creating a piece, not just um, drawing a still life, if you can work movement into it, and this piece really has a lot of movement in it, whether it's in the fish or the water and the sunlight coming through. I mean, she would be very pleased with this piece. Mm, that's wonderful. So this is a collaborative piece by Carver Everson and Nicole Crouch, two artists, a part of this exhibition who, through getting to know Sybil, um, did a form of kind of embodied research where they made work in response to her life. And so, um, yeah, tell me a little bit more about um, how you see Sybil coming out in this response to her work. Well, she was always fascinated by natural history. So, you know, these pieces, yes, they are in the First Nation style, but you know what it is. And there's um, a lot of movement in it. I just think that she would be pleased with that because it, it speaks so clearly as to um, what it is, fish, and just the movement in the water and the sunlight coming through. Yeah, you really get the sense of their environment. Oh, like yeah. As you were saying before, that sense of being underwater and feeling that light kind of filter through and touch you. And, yes, and the, yeah. just the cycle of life. There's the eggs and, you know, it's the spawning and, yeah, she loved, she loved all the little things, you know, like I said, the cod head or, you know, a seed, a seed head from a crocus or any, any little thing. She was just fascinated with how nature worked. Mm. Um, she was a very religious person, but that didn't come out in how she related to us. That's very interesting. So even though she was a religious person, she was very interested in the natural world and biology. And yeah, science. very much, yeah. yeah. And Carver and Nicole worked together. They had conversations about how Sybil was influencing them and affecting them, but they also shared information and taught each other lessons. And I really thought that that kind of spoke to the way Sybil encouraged her students, but also for her students to teach each other and to, to really communicate with each other and not kind of be precious with knowledge. Yes, and in the class, every week, we had homework. Mm. And so at the end of the class, when we were having tea, she would announce what the homework was for the next week. And you were in deep caca if you didn't do that. <laughs> um, and then, while we were having tea, everybody would put their homework up and we would all critique everyone else's piece. Sybil wouldn't always, you know, she would point things out, but we were all involved in everybody's homework. And so we learned from each other that way. You know, we saw what, oh, wow, 
I never thought of that, you know, whether it was dandelions or um, conversation. She just, sometimes it would just be one word that would be the topic of the homework. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Wind. Yeah, so then you had to go home and make a piece. And uh, yeah, it would be up the next week and we would all see what everyone else had done. And that yeah, was interesting. Okay. That, that group um, conversation was always really interesting. Yeah, I was watching a DVD a little while ago and um, it's Remembering Sybil. And I know that you're interviewed in it as well as Richard and Gary. And at one point Richard talks about how she was the worst teacher he had ever had, but it was the best teacher for him <laughs> in his whole life. And I just, I thought that that was so interesting. Yeah, she was very good at teaching composition, but she was not good at explaining how to, whether it was with watercolors or oils or printmaking. Um, she'd wait until you made a big mistake before she'd say anything. And you'd think. <laughs> Just wanted to let you find your own. Oh, way. yes. <laughs> so, and I've had other instructors that were just so precise as to, well, you get this effect by doing this. And if you just tried that, then, you know, so that it sped things up. <laughs> you had a better result. But the struggle to find out yourself probably taught me more. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much, Marcy, for coming in and visiting us. You're welcome. for sharing. We really appreciate it. And we hope to see you all at the exhibition Finding Civil, open from March 6th to May 1st.